Expo after dark. You get rowdy, but not too rowdy. Yeah, not too rowdy because I just signed my life away up there saying that you wouldn't uh, say bad things. Uh, there are kids here somewhere. I guess. At heart. We'll pretend there are kids here somewhere. That's right. But we're, we're, we're all kids at heart. Right. Um, My name is Brian Ward, I'm the Senior Director of uh, Video Production and uh, Digital Media at Shout Factory. We produce uh, the Digimon Adventure Try movies on Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, joining us this year, we're going to have a, an amazing panel because uh, last year, if you were here, was anyone here for this panel last year? It's all going to be the same questions, same answers. Uh, it's not, I promise. It's going to be a little bit, uh, we're, going to, we're going to sort of carry on from where we were uh, last year. Joining us, we have your voice of Sora, Ms. Ali Noshan. And of course, your voice of Ty. How do you follow that one up, Ryan? It's, uh, it's, <laughs> we have the, you know, we've got the English ADR voice director, Mr. Ryan Johnston. <laughs> and then your voice of TK, Mr. Johnny Young Bosch. as a uh, so you want to be a voice actor sort of panel and I want to know just as a show of hands how many of you people in this room want to be a voice actor okay. <laughs> this is half the battle right here it's just showing up uh, why why do you guys want to be a, a voice actor what if someone who had their hand up put it put it uh, in the back sir why, or, uh, man, I'm sorry, it's very dark. <laughs> man, say, uh, your highness. Your, exactly. <laughs> sorry, well, why do you want to be a voice actor? I want to express myself. Okay. You're expressing That's a great, yeah. <laughs> Is that Dana? <laughs> I want to give my voice to a character, give them life. I like that. Why did you guys want to be voice actors? Like, what, what was that reason that was boiling up in you when you decided this, this is the career? For me, um, I, I have a musical theater background, um, but before that, I, all I did was give voices to babies who couldn't talk yet, or animals, and, and a light bulb completely, like I, I watched the wonderful little bit of Disney and The Muppet Show and every cartoon known to man, and I didn't, it didn't occur to me that that was somebody's job, and I was at, I was at the University of Michigan doing musical theater, and a teacher overheard me say something, and she's like, was that you? And I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> they just kind of up. And she said, no, you need to do voiceovers. And I was like, whoa, that's what I want to do. Because I was, you know, and so after, as soon as she said that, um, and I realized, wait a minute, I could be the little mermaid. Um, that was it for me. I, that's all I wanted to do. I'm like, I can sing. I can talk and stuff. <laughs> so that, uh, that was it. And then I, you know, I moved to L.A. and here I am at Anime Expo. That's interesting. I, I also have a musical theater background, eight shows a week from the time I was like eight to eighteen. We're gonna do jazz hands a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, and as a kid, I was always making you know fucking silly voices just to kind of be annoying and just because that's how I, you're talking about express yourself, I was, I was very auditory and expressed myself 
that way. Also, I kind of had hippie parents and we didn't have TV in the house. So, but, but I had these like cassette tapes of old, old tiny radio broadcasts. And so I, I had all these voices, you know, like the, the, the old teen hour and stuff going in, in my head that the kid might have, should not have known. <laughs> then, uh, fast forward a little, when I was in like high school, my father was a radio psychologist and so sometimes I'd go like, to, like you go when your kid to where your parents work and he was building his practice like Frasier, you know, on the radio. And so the radio studio became a very familiar, comfortable work environment to me. Fast forward again, I went to Tisch School of the Arts at NYU uh, in, in Manhattan, in New York. And it, that, coming from a small town in the Midwest, uh, was pretty overwhelming. But there was a radio station, so it felt comfortable and familiar to me. So I had my own radio show there. And then when I graduated, I had a demo and a way in. That's how it happened. So then, so then just, just for a quick, all those people that raise their hands, how many of you also have musical theater backgrounds? <laughs> it, it dwindled a little bit. Sorry, <laughs> you guys, you're all still in the running. This is... <laughs> Unless Johnny's got a different story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my story is different. Um, you're all back in the running. <laughs> I, uh, I was shy. Um, I got picked on a lot. I got beat up a lot. I was kidnapped, and so it made me very reserved, like all of my emotions were just tucked in um, growing up. And um, when I was in high school, I was part of this, uh, it was like a speech class, and we did like some uh, plays in, within the class, and I got to act out as, a, I was so scared, I didn't want to do it, but they forced me to kind of be the superhero of this thing and then tr do these other things. But as I started to do that and express myself, some of those inner, like, you know, dreams or passions, then that, I, it opened up this thing for me, you know? It was like therapy. Um, and so I just had that desire to continue to do that, you know, e explore these branches of emotion, you know, and play out all this stuff in my life, you know, and or be able to play out these other characters in their lives. It's just, you know, good therapy, and it, and it just became super fun for me, and that's, for me, that's, I just, it, you know, I just got stuck to it, and I'm drawn to it. So How many of you were kidnapped? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? I got it, actually, it's, it's taken a long time for me to even talk about that, that stuff, but within the last few years, I, I feel comfortable. myself out. <laughs> so, and, and I'm wondering if, if you don't necessarily want to be a voice actor, but how many people have ever thought about voice directing? Okay, so we've got, we've got some of your people in here as well. I would like to know, were you a, a gearhead, a tech head who was just like, I love engineering and this is sort of what I want to do? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I got into the, the whole world of animation really a roundabout uh, path from started of just being a music guy. I used to uh, write songs and, and uh, started singing a lot of bands. I was usually kind of the front man. And then when it kind of came time to go to college, I was like, well, audio is cool, I guess I'll study that. Yeah. And uh, I really took a liking to it. And uh, ran a little studio of my own up in Washington State for a little while and then found my way down to LA and ultimately found a job at a company called Studiopolis where we produced these fine films. And uh, yeah, just worked my way up and shadowed uh, a couple, well, worked with and shadowed a couple of just really amazing voice directors uh, for a long time. I was um, kind of the right hand man to uh, a wonderful director uh, named Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Taught me a ton. I just, you know, watching her by osmosis, just absorbing some, some really, really neat storytelling techniques. And, and then when the time came, they sort of moved me into the next chair, and now I get to work with these talented folks. Last year we, we talked with Colleen, Joshua, and uh, Jeff Newboy about reprising uh, characters that they had played before as they came back to Digimon Adventure Tribe. Johnny, though, you stepped into a, a, an iconic character of TK, uh, having not played him before. Correct. I'm wondering how much from those previous iterations, did you try to bring back to the character? And 
Conversely, what do you think you brought to the character? Well, um, I looked up as much as I could find, which for some reason it was kind of hard for me to find a lot about TK. Um, and then so I started asking people that, grew, that I knew grew up on the show. Um, and so, but a lot of the feedback was, is, is that he was, you know, a character that everyone liked, but he didn't have a whole lot. So there wasn't like, you know, a big foundation in the build, you know, to go, oh, I need to carry all these things into him. You know, so it was really me just watching just where he, he was and his voice, but then not really needing to worry about it too much because he's older. Um, and just trying to stay true to whatever the animation is now. Um, and then just make that the foundation. So as long as the animation and the character was true to the story, then I think I felt okay. But I was super nervous going into it. I mean, I didn't know, I, I said this in the, throughout the day, that I, did, I had no idea that these characters existed. Uh, prior to that. I thought it was like different things constantly, you know? Um, and then when I heard that people were reprising their role, I was like, wait a second, I wasn't in this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and you got the wrong guy. Um, and then, yeah, so it was super scary for me, and I, I thought for sure that fans would hate me. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, you guys have been great, though. You guys have been very supportive, and I do appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, so, super scary, but it's been a lot. I think one of the, the really cool things about having somebody like Johnny come in and play a character that's already been established is, well, first of all, the characters are old, so that gives you a little bit of room to sort of play with it and mold it and make it your own while still hopefully, you know, taking into account everything that came before and, and really just kind of taking the spirit of what that character is and bringing them into the future. And I think that, that you, Johnny, and as well as, you know, our other cast members that have sort of stepped in, I think from my end, uh, have done a really, really solid job at, you know, take, absorbing what was there before, but also not being afraid to take some chances and really make the performance and the characters their own, which I think is what it has to be. We, we talked a little bit about, um, again, last year, we talked a little bit about acting uh, in a new animated, uh, for a new animated project versus looping and dubbing. Um, and the differences between those things. Ryan, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit from the perspective of the person on the other side of the glass, your day-to-day -day job and, and how it might be different for you to make sure that the perfect dub uh, episode or movie is perfect. What are you looking for? What do these guys all deliver uh, on a daily basis for you? What is perfect, I guess, that's the, the nebulous thing you're sort of searching for when you're doing these sessions. I don't know that that is necessarily something we're striving for, perfection, but what I, what I can say that if, if I go into a session and I do a day of dubbing, I think what counts as a success for me is, sure, did we fit into the lip flap, but less than that, I think it's, it's did we take this character and do what the story needed us to do with it today, you know? I think it's, 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 it's less for me, less about making sure that the, the lip flap and the voice is accurate. I would much rather go for a quality performance and, you know, solid storytelling. That makes sense. And for the cast members, I'm, I'm curious about that. How much does lip flap play into your performance and, and how much are you more just keen to make sure that the character comes across in the best possible way that just happens to fit within the time that the mouth opens and closes? Uh, for me, um, I much would prefer to keep with the character and all that. And I, I, um, as you do it more and more, you just get better at it. Um, and you can tell, oh, there's a lot of movement and I got four words, so I better figure out how to fill that space. Um, but, you know, so it comes down to writing, it comes down to, um, you know, I, it's, it's, it's experience, really, um, for me. I know when I, when Digimon was my very first anime show, and so it was, an, but I really had to learn on the job, and it's not easy. I mean, you've got, you're in there by yourself, You've got beeps in your in your headphones, so you hear three beeps, and then the fourth beep is imaginary, and that's when supposedly the lips start moving, and that's when you're supposed to start talking and fit all of this in. And it's like it's like you know, patting your head and rubbing your belly. It's 
it's a lot. And I, I mean, I was exhausted after two hours of doing Digimon. I was like, oh my god, they're never gonna call me back. I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody help me. But as you do it more, I mean, now I've got X amount of years under my belt, so it's <laughs> it's a lot easier. Like I can do it falling off a log. It's just not it's it's not as challenging just because I I know what I'm doing now. Um, so. As long as you have, you've got a good director and the writing is close, and then you know, lots of times I'm like, yeah, that's not going to fit. So I'll just rewrite it as I'm, do, as I'm going. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, but I do try. I would prefer to stay true to the character. I think uh, definitely dubbing is more technically challenging than original animation because of that. You need to fit not only the words but the emotion that you want to express in this very confined, defined space. And initially, the mechanics of that take up so much energy. But as you're saying, after a while, it becomes second nature. I think the other component I want to add to what Colleen said is if you can express a, a, an idea or a, a phrase in many different ways, then suddenly you can stretch something out or compress it. The example I always think of is uh, the actor Tom Conti in an old movie called The Dresser. He, you know that movie? He, yeah, he says the word sir, just that one word, a hundred different ways, you know. Sir, sir, sir. This, so there's not just different emotions, but um, rhythms and paces to it as well. So you can have... Yeah, it, it, huh is a good one. So many times... You say huh so many times. Huh? Yeah. I'm uh, scared, what's happening? I've been in sessions where just to will bring somebody to their, to their knees. It's, <laughs> and it's amazing how much you feel like. I, I, my running joke is if somebody really lands up, it's like I feel like I just got your whole backstory. <laughs> I think it's kind of true. You feel really gratified if you can get some something across that feels right for the music and the scene and everything. And little, with no words, even just a just a just a grunt. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's one of the hardest parts of dubbing, I think, is, is to not lose the character or lose the feeling of the moment be, because there's no word, there's a lip flap, and it's just a sound. And how do you express that? That's, that's one of those building blocks, you know, like tempo and pace and lip flaps. And so once you get that down, though, it, it does become a lot more fluid. It, it sort of seems like that that might also be where the musical theater and Johnny, you're in a, you have a band, you've got a musical background and musical yeah. talent. Uh, I, I, it almost seems like that is where a lot of that musical element comes in too. Is a, you've got to have the rhythm of the beep, beep, beep. Uh, but then you also have to know how to make those words flow in the time that you have. So it is a good thing to have. Um, but Make sure the M happens when the lips go together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's so true though, I mean, we, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I'm in a position that I get to work with a lot of very talented actors in a wide range of, of uh, you know, shows and properties. And I, I have found that it, it, there does seem to be a common thread in people that do have a musical background. Uh, do you find it a little bit easier to sort of uh, really zero in on on a character's intent, even if it is just one word, because really the musicality and the, and the, and the delivery of one word can change the meaning of an entire scene almost. So. That's why sometimes we'll, we'll rewrite, right. you know, like the, a conjunction or like just, it's, like, the, it's a tiny, like, it's, it's a tiny, there's a, like a phrase that God is in the details. Yeah. It's just tiny little details, you know, that can make the difference between, oh, the, it's gonna like, uh, make the audience uh, feel something, or it's going to be kind of schmaltzy over the top. So I'm wondering, because all of these folks, I'm sure, if given the opportunity, the moment this panel ends, they would swarm you with all kinds of questions about uh, advice and, and, you know, they want a personal school. Let's say security is dragging you away and you've got time for one piece of advice to give to any one of these aspiring voice actors, what would that one piece of advice be? Learn to create characters. It's all about creating characters. Not, it's not that it's great to have a great voice and it's great to oh, I do funny voices. It's not about the voice, which is a great place to start, but um, you've got to be able to create a full, well-rounded character. 
I mean, I have many more. But I'm not sure. I would say be an interesting person. Work on your, really work on yourself because let's say you're in a conversation and, and nobody's listening to you. Um, well, why would they when you record that same voice? Like Colleen said, it's not just about the sound of your voice or the quality of your voice or your ability to you know, read the words on the page. It's can you suck people in, make them listen to you? You know, is there some musicality to your voice? I'd say, Acting over voice for me. Yeah. There are a lot of great voices that people can make, but if there's not a compelling performance or motivation or intent behind it, then what's the point? I don't know. Johnny just showed you all of those things. <laughs> I'm sure being, I, Josh was sort of an extension of what you were just saying, not just in performance-wise, but I'm sure just being a likable person in a studio is going to get you pretty far as yeah. well. Uh -oh. You can have all the talent, but if no but one wants to work with you. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, there's one, I, I wanted to add something because it's like, I said be an interesting person, and I didn't say how to be an interesting person. Um, a really good exercise to do, uh, to get you to that place that very few people go to, is to just make a commitment to yourself to be uh, as, as close to 100% honest and present as possible at all times. And when you start doing that, uh, you will um, interact with people in a different way. And so when you see a character uh, on the page, you'll approach it differently. You won't think of it in a calculating manner full of uh, technique or, or method or anything like that. You'll just experience it the way that you are now experiencing your life. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's very worthwhile. What's that? I'm sorry, but you have microphones uh, facing the front though, and I'm pretty sure that's the one that's feeding back. I think you just turned it around. Oh, I think it's off. Will you mute it? Is that better? Um, well, we just tried to 160 hertz. I don't know what that is, I'm sorry. Uh, 160 hertz? Sorry. That's like the lower. Yeah, I'm Good. not sure what's going on. Is there feedback? I don't hear it. Hello. I think I think this is actually leading into my next question um, because we we are going to give some of you an opportunity to audition and even read a scene with our cast. Um, <laughs> Going into an audition or into a voice job, what is your process for prepping your voice, your warm-up techniques? Your like, is, is there that secret that you have? Uh, um, it, well, for me, I I'm an overthinker, so I don't. <laughs> Just to see if there's any weirdness or if there, you know, I and I look, I look at the beats. It, and it, you know, voiceover in the in the word, it's voice actor. So you go back to your acting 101 things. Who am I talking to? Where have I been? Where am I going? What's happening in the scene? Those kind of things. So I look for those things and I, you know, make little mental notes and then I put it away because if I read it too many times, it doesn't even sound like words anymore for me. Uh, I'm much more, I'm a better cold reader than a continual reader, I don't know what you call it. Um, so for me, that's what I do. If I have the script ahead of time, if I don't, I, it's like even better. I like to have a picture. Pictures work for me. I'm a visual person. So um, I, if I look at it, I already have something in my mind, unless I don't know how old, then I gotta look at the notes and see, you know, and then read, read everything. I know you're like, oh, my line, my line, my line, my line. There's stuff in between. 
So we have to read, all the, read everything so that you know what's happening. Um, that's what I do. I don't really do vocal warm-ups unless I have to sing. And I probably should, I'm supposed to, but don't tell my voice to you. I don't. I, I always do vocal warm-ups because the sessions can last for hours. Typically, I've been doing the four-hour sessions for, for Digimon, and you want to start strong and end strong. So, and I can show you a couple simple ones. Please. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done this since I was a kid. I do this every day while I'm driving around anyway. But part of it is to warm up your instrument. And the other reason that I do this is to get out of my head and into my body. Again, I don't want to think. Acting's not about thinking. It's about being present, listening, reacting, being honest and authentic. So to the extent that we can get out of our heads and into our body, it helps to facilitate that process. So I'll, I'll go on a walk beforehand, I'll do deep meditative breathing. There's something called ujjayi breathing, it's in through the nose, out through the mouth, and make a whispered ah. So it's like this. You don't push it, but it, what it does is it opens up your throat and, it, and you start to breathe from your diaphragm. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> So that's, a, that's one of them. Uh, another one uh, is, is this. Get away from my glove. Like you do trills up and down. Like that. Uh, uh, the lips, the tip of the tongue, and the teeth. I'm doing a bunch of these really fast. Uh, right? Elocution and such. Uh, then there's a. I'm going really fast, but these are like. These are just basic, right? Musical theater. All that stuff. I'm doing it while I'm driving to the session or whatever. Yeah. And oh, also the the panting <laughs> because it's it strengthens your diaphragmatic uh, breathing so that you don't have to take a breath in the middle of a sentence. Uh, also breathe in. <laughs> I can go really long on that time that way. These are just, your voice is your instrument, so this is taking care of it the way to, to warm it up and, and get inside of it. So it'll work, play, perfect. Um, it really just depends on what I'm doing or what kind of what character, the age. Um, if it's a younger character, I, I might do some humming. Um, uh, but mostly what I do is when I get in there, I, I will ask you questions. What's going on here? <laughs> What's just happening? Where are we going? Why is this happening? You know, and then you, you, know, you get enough feedback and information there, especially because we don't get the script ahead of time. You know? right. um, and so that's, that's my cheat, is just asking a few questions. And then, uh, is there a reference for this? <laughs> Have I done this character before? Um, you know, there's a lot of those things. Usually it depends. If it's a younger character, I'll, I'll clear my throat, make sure that I'm clear and warmed up for it. If it's like I'm playing something gruff, then I'm not going to look at it. Or I might shout a bunch of street signs as I get there so I sound like <laughs> I've been through war or something. <laughs> do you guys uh, do any dietary restrictions? Like, I, I never do uh, alcohol the day before. Morning of. I, I don't do any dairy. Morning of, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so go, go, go. If you're going for that James Coburn sort of, then you might need a little. But if you have dairy, you'll go. You'll, you'll hear that. You know, get it. Uh, no I, cold water, only room temperature, all that stuff. I try to work out. In the, I mean, I try, I try to work out every day, but um, I I'm always like because while you're working out, breathing into your nose and out through your mouth anyway. Um, so mornings that I work out, I'm in much better vocal shape because I'm, I'm awake, my body's awake, I'm in, you know, and so I, I find that days that I don't get a chance to work out, um, I, I have to uh, work a little harder. It's so funny, because you, you, yeah. you guys stand, like I always stand, oh, I'm never, standing. never I sit. I can't sit, yeah. I cannot sit when I do it. No, I can't. I Even if it's four hours. hours. No, I stand. Okay. Yeah, we all stand. It's I funny though, I love the standards, just saying. <laughs> uh, you mentioned working out. Like, if I lift heavy, I, I can't, I can only do my higher range. Oh. It's really weird. <laughs> it's down to the testosterone. It's like, ooh! <laughs>
So now that everyone should be warmed up, because you're all doing the... Except for the... <laughs> Um, we're gonna we're gonna try a little experiment here. Uh, Ryan has agreed to help cast and uh, even direct uh, a scene or two from Digimon Adventure Try. We're gonna do two different scenes. We're gonna cast two different people. We're gonna get an opportunity to audition a couple. And um, if well, we'll we can proceed. Ryan, how would you like to go about casting your two characters, one of them being, uh, in scene number one, we've got Matt. <laughs> Correct. I, we can yeah. start with scene number one. Do it. Let's start with scene number one? Okay. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I guess, first things first, we need to uh, put out some auditions for Matt, so I guess let's, uh, let's pick a couple people and uh, we'll, we'll give a couple reads and see uh, who's got what it takes. Pick care, pick care. <laughs> I see Mario over here. Mario! <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is gonna be a very specific take on that. Yes. <laughs> so, so, Brian, how, how should we go about this? Do you want to have him come down here? Sure. Or? Yeah, come on down, Mario. Okay, let's pick a couple of the people. Uh, our guy in the blue here looks like he has a good handle on, on the audio. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I was gonna see. Uh, who do we have in the back? Stand up. I can't quite quite see here. Let's go up. How about our man up, up way in the back there? The black shirt. Come on down. Okay, so it's there a line from the script that you want? I was gonna say, um, in our front page for scene one, there's a nice chunky little Matt paragraph we can uh, <laughs> put down the line to. Basically, you sorry about the other day. You got it. So guys, normally when, uh, when people are auditioning, you get a little bit of background on the character, so I, I think we all kind of know what Matt's all about. Friendship. <laughs> Uh, in this scene in particular, a little bit frustrated with our, our hero Ty, yes. who is maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit reluctant to sort of jump back into action here. So I'll tell you what, uh, what's your name? Uh, Brian. Brian, hey. Brian. I really hope that your name will be Matt. It's me! <laughs> I guess with that in mind, uh, let, let's have you read uh, this first paragraph. Let's go from, from sorry the other day to uh, infected Digimon show. Sure. And uh, we're royal. This is take one. Okay. Sorry about the other day. I didn't mean to get so ticked off, but the truth is you need to get your act together. Because it's only a matter of time before more infected Digimon show up. All right, all right, great. I'll tell you what, give me one more read on that. You're trying to be friendly, but there's a little bit of undercurrent of frustration there. This is take two. Sorry about the other day. I didn't mean to get so ticked off. But the truth is, you need to get your act together. Because it's only a matter of time before more infected Digimon show up. What's your name, buddy? I'm not Ricky. I'm sorry. I'm Kim. It's nice to meet you. It's Ken? Kim. Kim. Cool. Pleasure. Welcome. Alright, well, uh, yeah, I think you know the truth. Let's right. see what you got. This is, uh, this is Kim. Take one. Sorry about the other day. I, I didn't mean to get so ticked off, but the truth is you need to get your act together. Because it's only a matter of time before more infected Digimon show up. Great. <laughs> pass, I love that thing you did, that was a great energy. On, by the time you can get your act together, I, I want to feel that anger, but see if you can pull the volume back. He's trying to keep from exploding. Let's hear it, this is take two. Sorry about the other day. I, I didn't mean to get so ticked off. 
But the truth is you need to get your act together. Wait, that was the line you meant. Crud. <laughs> the truth? Get punch in, punch in. Yeah, we're still wrong, we're still wrong. <laughs> Sorry about the other day. I, I didn't mean to get so ticked off, but the truth is you need to get your act together. Because it's only a matter of time before more infected Digimon show up. Great. This is Ricky. Ricky, I've done that. I can't count. <laughs> Alright, Ricky, let's see what you got. We're rolling on take one. Sorry about the other day. I didn't mean to get so ticked off. But the truth is, you need to get your act together. Because it's only a matter of time before more infected Digimon show up. I want you to make me believe it. I want, you got that bubbling anger. It's like, come on, man, this is life or death. Just stay tuned. <sighs> Sorry about the other day. I didn't mean to get so ticked off. But the truth is, you need to get your act together. Because it's only a matter of time before more like the Digimon show up. Nice. Three nice reads there. You know what? You're all three great. I think purely based on who took the direction the best, and you all did great. I'm gonna go with Ricky. But Brian and Kim, you guys killed it too. Give them a round of applause. Now I guess we're gonna read the whole scene, right? I think I've got a microphone here. Is there anything special going on with that? I can do every Digimon voice. <laughs> So here we go, yeah, this is uh, scene one, uh, this is uh, actually from the first uh, of the Adventure Tribe movies, this is from Reunion. Uh, I chose this scene in particular though because it does sort of come back uh, into play in our, in our upcoming final movie, Future, that uh, we just started working on. Can I just say that this is kind of exciting because we never get to do this, we're in there by ourselves, so I don't, I don't ever get to read with you guys, so this is kind of... I'm a little of nervous. <laughs> So uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just give you a little bit of context and I'm going to let you guys let it rip. <laughs> so here's what's happening. Matt and Ty, as I mentioned earlier, they're a little bit at odds. We're back, uh, the Digimon are back, we're sort of thrown back into the fold. However, Ty is having a sort of existential crisis. Do we fight and help the Digimon or is that just going to make things worse? Should we just hang it up and walk away? Uh, Matt, however, Thinks we should keep going. We got. We're in this. We need to see this through till the end. Whatever it takes. Uh, meanwhile, Sora over here uh, has taken it upon herself to uh, lock both Matt and Ty in a Ferris wheel. Uh, so they have to. <laughs> and TK is just sort of taking it in like a little deeper. It's always TK. <laughs> so with that said, here's our scene one from uh, Digimon Adventure Tribe Reunion. Uh, starting with Sora, and this is take one, and we're rolling. They're finally alone. Now maybe they can end that stupid argument. Huh? I didn't know they were arguing. Well, more like not arguing. And since they've been acting like bratty kids, I decided to give them a timeout. What do you think? Will this work? <laughs> well, at least they'll talk. <laughs> 
Listen, hmm. sorry about the other day. I didn't mean to get so ticked off, but the truth is you need to get your act together because it's only a matter of time before more infected Digimon show up. What's going on in your head? This isn't like you. The older you would have taken action. What can I do? Huh? Well, it's not like when we were kids. These days, it feels like I see more, but I understand less. Is fighting the answer? Maybe. It seems right at the time. But maybe it's not. I still believe we're the only ones who can fix this. I'm just worried. What if we make it worse? <sighs> huh? Oh, spare me. What? Quit trying to run away from it. I'm not. I wish I could hear what Matt and Ty are talking about. <laughs> swapping jokes. Nice goggles. Any reason you decided to bring them along? Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Whoa. A big distortion. And see. about time for one more scene, so we're going to do one more, but, but first I want to give Ricky a little prize. <laughs> As if I met, but this wonderful cast wasn't prize enough. Uh, Bandai of Bluefin have donated a couple of things. Uh, by the way, has anyone gone down there and taken pictures with the metal camera yeah. yeah. If you haven't, it's at 2406, you should go. They've got lots of stuff, including things like this. Yeah. Ricky, this is yours. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> You don't want your pages. She got a script? Scene two, what would I need? A makeup. Come on up. I don't need two more. I need two more. Make me believe you want it. Hey! Blue green hair? Yep. Yeah, you. Come on down. Uh, read a short little scene from the upcoming uh, sixth and final installment of Adventure Tribes for the future. Uh, we're going to audition for the part of Mako. Uh, you guys familiar with Mako, this character? So she's uh, sort of a new in town kind of uh, character. She's a little bit timid. She really wants to sort of fit in with the group, but she has a lot of self confidence issues. And in this particular scene, it seems like everything has been going wrong for the entire group. It, you know, people are dead. Actually, our buddy Ty is presumed dead at this point, and she's feeling pretty guilty about all of it. <laughs> so in this moment, resume the The search continues. But, uh, so in this scene, basically everything emotionally for her is coming to a head. So with that said, uh, there's a nice little Mako paragraph in the middle of this page. And, uh, what is, what is your name? I'm Brooke. Brooke? Welcome, Brooke. Uh, so I'll tell you what, let's, uh, have you give it a read. This is Brooke, take one. I guess you could say that every bad thing that's happened is my fault. 
Ever since Miku Mom went crazy, it seems like nothing's gone right for us. Nice. Here's a note that I will give to just about every actor that comes in to read for this movie. Uh, pronunciation of Mekuma. Oh, yeah, sorry. There you go. That ku is big. Wow, right. sorry, Jeff. She's that sort of an emotional break here. She's trying to keep from crying, but, but she doesn't want to you know, let it go full blast. So with that in mind, let's go for one more take. This is two. I guess you could say that every bad thing that's happened is my fault. Ever since Mekuma went crazy, it seems like nothing's gone right for us. Yeah, excellent. Woo! Thank you, Greg. All right, and you have it here. I'm going to have to a line. What's your name? Oh, Vanessa. Vanessa? Yeah. Pleasure. Welcome. All right, well, let's, uh, let's give Vanessa a run at it. This is Vanessa, take one. I guess you could say that every bad thing that's happened is my fault. Ever since May Kumon went crazy, it seems like nothing's gone right for us. Nice. So, for our second read, I want to hear this just be a little bit more internalized, almost like you're just coming to this realization for the first time. You've sort of been a spectator to all of this, and now it's just sort of coming down on you that, what if I'm the cause to all of this? So with that in mind, this is Vanessa. Take two. I guess you could say that Every bad thing that's happened is my fault. Ever since Meikumon went crazy, it seems like nothing's gone right for us. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. And up next we have... Celia. Celia. Pleasure. Welcome. All right, Celia. Uh, this is take one for you. I guess... You could say every bad thing that's happened is my fault. Ever since Mekumon went crazy, it seems like every nothing's gone right for us. Nice. Give me one, one more pass. This time, I want you to be just on the brink of devastation. All of your friends are in danger, and it's your fault. Awesome. It's here. This is day two. <laughs> Every bad thing that's happened is my fault. Ever since Mikuman went crazy, it seems like nothing's gone right for us. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. That was great. I think uh, each of you brought something unique and special to the role of Mako. But we can only pick one. So for today, Brooke, you've got the gig. So here's what's going on. Like I said, this is in our last movie. Uh, who here has seen the uh, the preceding movie, Coexistence? So, as you probably remember, it ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Our buddy Ty has gone missing. He fell down the old uh, earthquake fissure. Uh, Sora uh, is looking after Kari, who is now devastated that her brother is probably dead. Uh, and is actually collapsed under the weight of, of the stress and the emotional turmoil. So in this moment, we've just gotten back to the human world from the digital world. Uh, Sora is looking after Kari. TK is also assisting. Uh, Matt, who in this scene is going to be lovingly performed by our buddy Joshua Seth. Well, I'm going to make him sound like this. <laughs> So as our attentions are turning to make sure that Kari is okay, Matt is stepping up as the de facto leader of the group, which is a pretty big moment for him. Meanwhile, Mako is trembling in the corner, realizing 
the negative impact she's made on our group and indeed the world at large. <laughs> so, with that in mind, here we go. This is uh, our scene two for today from the Digimon Adventure Track Future. This is take one, starting with Sora, and we're rolling. Kari! She fainted! Don't let her fall! Her forehead's so hot, she's running a fever. But she was okay when we got here. <laughs> All the stress it got to her. I guess you could say that every big bad thing that's happened is my fault. Ever since my Kumon went crazy, it seems like nothing's gone right for us. Well, that's not true. Huh? Remember that time we had cake? <laughs> yeah, <the> chocolate. <laughs> Lots of things have gone right for us since then, Mako. But the future is what's important now, not the past. I think Kari will be fine if we just get her off her feet. Come lay down for a bit, Kari. Tie or no tie, we'll be okay. <laughs> I hope you're right about that, Matt. I really do. any questions that they would la ask. I I've been looking at Joel from MST3K right over here. And, and being a shop tier myself, we've got a pretty nice, uh, you know. It's kind of hard to believe, but the Digimon Anime will turn 20 next year. Woo! Woo! I didn't hear the beginning because there was a boo. What? Yeah, there's a boo. Digimon Anime is turning 20 next year. I just want to share your fondest memories of the franchise. Ooh. Fondest memories? Okay, good. Fondest memories. <laughs> memories. Sure. Uh, well, for me, the very first movie. Remember when we did that and they picked us up in limos and we went. To... <laughs> did, did you get that? And then no. they took. No, I and saw they... the yellow paper on the thing and what? I was like, hey, they're doing. We did. Uh, I didn't sure. get the invite. You're not kidding? I'm not kidding. Okay, no, for me. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. I got to do a whole press gauntlet, you know, like a gym type of thing. There was, and then after the, and then I saw the screening and all the celebrities, like, that brought their kids, you know, not like real celebrities, like not us, you know, but real ones. And then afterwards they were like, hey, you got the limo for the rest of the night, go wherever you want, you know, it's, it's on us. <laughs> So it was um, learning how to do it and, and 
figuring out like what it, what is this thing called anime? Like I, I you know I really was unfamiliar and I hadn't really watched any and I really didn't know what I was doing. So um, feeling more comfortable doing it and like I you know I have I have a lot of like anxiety ridden memories. <laughs> but I had fun ones too because it was you know it was my first one and Sora will always have a really special place. <laughs> For the people that didn't get a chance to uh, try the voice acting right now, is there some uh, like email or like contact information to send to, like tapes of our auditions? Tape? Yeah. <laughs>